My next guest, Lawrence Fox, has announced a campaign against the alleged politicisation of legal institutions. Lawrence Fox has named the campaign the Bad Law Project, and it is going to be high on the agenda for his political party, Reclaim. He recently fl filmed and shared a video online of an army veteran being arrested by police outside his home for, quote, causing anxiety by retweeting a meme. Let's take a look. This is Lawrence Fox, the person who did the tweet. I'm Harry Miller. It's basically a big setup. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. But well, you've set yeah, me up. That's exactly it. You are about to arrest a man for posting an done. image on Facebook. It's and I ain't moving. So, big fella, I suspect you're the one that's going to arrest me. That's absolutely fine. Post this on Facebook. Yeah, I'm a British Army veteran. Yeah, you should not be doing this to me. You cannot criticise the ideology. If you criticise the new woke ideology, you criticise anything about all of this pride movement and all this stuff, you make any criticism of it whatsoever, you end up in cuffs. Know that. Lawrence Fox, welcome to the show. You mentioned there on that video the British Gestapo. I mean, that seems hyperbolic. Um, but, but so did your use of the uh, word alleged these <laughs> over the thing. It's not, not alleged. It's, it's actually cool. happening. But, you know, when we look at things like that, when we look at someone being dragged away in handcuffs for posting a meme on Facebook, it's difficult to defend that, isn't it? What, I mean, what are the arguments against your position here? My dad is right. He phoned me this morning and he went, you can make the same point and just not be so aggressive about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but we have a relationship with our police, which is sort of familial and, and consensual and homely and all of that. Yes. And when the police become what they are, which is the modern-day early Gestapo, you've got to start shouting in their faces until they stop behaving like the Gestapo. I suppose the counter-argument is that because you have, you know, these activists online, they will call someone a Nazi at a drop of a hat. They'll just always invoke the Third Reich, no matter what you do. You know, if you commit a microaggression, you're suddenly Goebbels, right? And I think that is, that is probably unhelpful. And they might say, well, you're doing the same. You're invoking the Gestapo. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're changing the pride flag into a swastika symbol. Aren't you doing their tactics back at them? Or is that the point? Yeah, that's the point, is to go, if I make a swastika at a pride flag, what's going to happen? I'm going to be, or this man in Darren's case, is going to be arrested for a thought crime. Now, look, let's deal in fact. The facts are, the man posted a meme on Facebook which resembled, which, you know, happened to be a collection of pride flags assembled in the shape of a swastika, that if you want to see, and he was arrested, uh, first of all by two cops, then by five, then by seven, and he was bundled into the back of a van yes. and taken away to not the Basingstoke Police Station, but the Basingstoke Investigation Centre. OK. That's where he was taken. That sounds like a terrifying dystopian place. Do you know it? what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And in Basingstoke, of all places. <laughs> love, love, love. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the, the, the problem with this is, is it's right there in front of our eyes to see. So my dad's view is like, Lars, great, you're doing well. Try and point this stuff out and be more gentle about it. And I'm going, these guys are a political police force. So we, I don't treat them in the way that I would t treat Dixon and Doc Green. I understand. OK, so how is it that you... Because uh, we all saw the video, it went viral. How is it that you were there and Harry Miller was there and how did you know this was going to happen? Yeah, so we started this thing called... Uh, because the government or someone in the government or someone somewhere doesn't want the Reclaim Party to have a bank account... Uh, really? so we're, yeah, very much so. So okay. we, we fought, we're in legal proceedings with banks to... Go, you've got to give us a bank account. Yes. So we thought, OK, well, we still want to fight the fight for everybody. So we started up the Bad Law Project, which is just to go, this is a terrible thing that's going on. So Darren uh, Brady was visited by the police, smart enough to record everything, mm. then sent his um, details over to us and we picked it up. So yes. I took myself and Harry who is, knows the law better than every single copper in this land, as yeah. far as I can tell. Well, I mean, Harry Miller was a police officer himself. He was a police past. officer, and also he won a case against the College of Policing for this so-called non-crime crime, which is taking place all the time. So we, we just went down to uh, stand in his kitchen. Then we did a Beatles about on him. So that's what's going on in that video there, where, where you, you come up to the police officer and yeah. they're, not, they're not expecting you to turn up. Yeah. It's like, it's sort of fun TV the other way around. Okay. It's like, oh, hello, Mr Goebbels. <laughs> you know, it's that. Yes. And, and, and as a result, you know, let to, on a serious note, as a result, uh, police procedure has been changed permanently but and fully 
within a week. Do you think, though, that it's sometimes the police are reluctant to do this and, you know, that they are being told? Because the College of Policing have said, you know, you're, you're, you must be investigating non-crime. You must, you, know, you must be policing what people think and feel and say. You know, and maybe a lot of the cops themselves are thinking, oh, I don't have, I want to do this, but I know I have to do this. Do you not get that sense? Well, you know, I was just following orders is not a defence. So, tough. Yeah. Sorry, mate, if you're going to do it, then you're as liable as the person who told you. To and do why it. is it that, you know, we've had the Court of Appeal in Harry Miller's case saying that the recording of non-crime is illegal... We've had, uh, or unlawful, we've had the, uh, the Home Office instructing the College of Policing to get rid of it, and they've sort of just fudged their guidelines a bit, and they haven't got rid of it, really. They've changed it, I think, to something else. Uh, I can't remember what it is. O-I-N-C, something, something well, non-crime. It's just, it's just it, we're going to carry on doing it whether you like it or not. Right, basically, It's essentially yeah. what, they're, what they're thinking. Is they're the sort of, they're, they're the armed wing of the woke movement, the police now. So people shouldn't trust them. They're meant to be served without fear or favour. Without favour. Yeah, they're not... all, all communities. Right. So, you know, you don't find them on Gay Uncle Day, which is coming up on the 16th of August. Where, where are they? Gay Uncle Day. <laughs> on, on the 16th of August, it's Gay Uncle Day. Do you not have a trans... I, I, I haven't heard of Gay Uncle Day. Uh, you were... And I'm part of that community, right? right uh, <laughs> you are a right-wing extremist. Am I? OK, yeah. Um, it, yeah, Gay Uncle Day is on the 16th of August. Yes. Where are the vans? So, but, with the coppers going, gay uncles are great! See, people don't, people don't understand with, you know, all this satirical stuff about, the, you know, the, the, the pride flag being rearranged. The point that being made there is, of course, there's an authoritarian element to the kinds of activists who fly that pride flag. And I think a lot of people interpret it as, as you basically saying, gay people are evil, gay people are Nazis. Is it that basic? I don't know any... I've not... None of my gay mates like pride. None of them do. I'm actually, that we're, we're sort of agreed that the original rainbow flag is kind of nice and beautiful and yes. it stood for something. But all of these triangles that accidentally make a swastika um, with, with little dots in them about intersex and ACE, which is going to become a very big topic of conversation in this country, yes. we're, we're minutes away from putting paedophile on that flag. You don't think that's a bit extreme, surely? I mean, that's... Well... Yeah. I mean, surely, because, and, you know, I, uh, I think where they've Why are minor wrong, attractive people not represented on the progressive flag? I know there have been some extreme activists who have been pushing for but that. Should but should they but, not but, be accepted? No. It's Why not? It's illegal. Non-consensual activity is illegal, so obviously not. Um, I mean, I, I'm with you that the original six-stripe flag was fine. Yeah. And the extra added things suggest an ideological step too far, in my view. That's yeah. what I would think. I agree. And I think there's a lot of... But I, do th- I don't think we should go that far in terms of adding you know, criminals into the flag. Well, you've got two-spirit. What is that? Two-spirit? You want, you're asking me, are no, you? No, you're putting I'm me on just, the spot. I, I, but I'm just saying, it, 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 two-spirit is a sort of made-up thing from the 1993 about... Um, it's from an Indigenous American. Yeah, uh, from 1993, an indi- Indigenous it, it, American. Yes, it's not something I claim to understand. So why not stick minor attractive person? And what's a, what's a, what's a QIA? What's, you know, what, what are these things? We all should and must stand up for gay and lesbian people in this world and transsexual people in this world. We must stand up for all of them because yes. we're all, we all matter. Every single one of us matters. What we shouldn't stand up for is the political ideology behind it, which wants to mutilate children and uh, take away children from their parents and their families. So, so that's the point, isn't it? But that is such an important point. And, and you know, we've now got the closure of the Tavistock, which is a, a really important step forward. And so, therefore, you won't have these gay kids being sort of fast-tracked into medicalisation. And all of those points you make are so important. And what you say there about, you know, we've got to stand up for trans people, gay people, their rights, everyone's human, you know. But then, you know, it's like your father says, when you bring in the idea of bring a... Maybe there'll be a paedophile on the flag next. Maybe these people are the Gestapo. Don't you think there is a case to be made that maybe let's rein that stuff in so we make the other case more persuasive? Don't you think you alienate some people by, by that kind of approach? Yeah, I think probably I do. Yeah, because also it's a journey for me as well yeah. to understand yeah. it. And I obviously spent 22 years acting, which is not a good preparation for public life on any level. Of course not. Because Probably the worst. Someone, someone just course. brings you bacon sandwiches. That's it. Right. But, but, I, but what you do get as an actor is instinct. Yes. And I know that this movement and, and this virus, this little woke virus, has tried to jump from several little, um, you know, cells yes. to another. And we've ended up in this place where no words mean anything yes. anymore. 
So you're putting in gay and lesbian people, which shouldn't be put in either at the same way anyway, because gays, most of my gay mates also don't have that many lesbian friends, for example. Why are we putting every single alphabet person who isn't a white, straight, pale male yes. into a group like, oh, you poor little darlings. Yeah, we I understand We need to look that, after yeah. you. It's like bollocks to that. Let's stand up <laughs> yeah. uh, and go, all of us, our human rights seem to be respected, but this movement wants to chop off the genitals of young people. We wouldn't let um, Somali Muslims come. We don't want to, There's whole safeguarding in school around stopping girls as they enter their uh, period of fertility being taken on a five-week holiday in Somalia or somewhere else in the world to get their genitals mutilated. So why are we sitting uh, and having police dancing around a flag which supports exactly the same ideology? And it's interesting because we now have Richie Heron, for instance, a gay man suing the NHS because his genitals were, remo- were removed. That was the end point because it, it sounded hyperbolic. I'm just explaining that that does happen. And I'm very happened. hyperbolic, but it's, it, none of what I'm saying is not true. So do you think, I mean, how do you feel now that this is now your world is politics, isn't it? It's, it's, it's activism, really. And, and, and your background is not that. I know. I, but uh, it's I, such a shift is what I'm saying. I want to do acting. Like I, I saw the trailer for this My Son Hunter film, which is coming out next month, and it's great, and I'm better at it. Uh, but also there's a problem in this world and it's really, really running deep and, and it's joining people from across the political spectrum. Mm. You and I would probably not agree on a great deal outside of yeah, not yeah. liking woke shit. Um, <laughs> so it's, I just feel like I've got to do it. I don't yeah. feel like so I have you, a choice. You, 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 you feel almost like you've been herded into this direction and it wasn't... Or so called. Were... Right. OK, that's interesting. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> but... It must have damaged your chances of getting certain roles with certain people because the because the acting world is so and Hollywood in particular is so captured. I know, I, but I could always have a double mastectomy. No, I could have the opposite. I could always have some boobs put on. I mean, you call could my, Lawrence, call but... myself Lauren Fox and go and demand to be cast as the lead in um, O.J. Simpson the movie. You know, I, it, it, it could happen. The world is that upside down. Well, I mean, you've clearly thought about this as a, as a, as a, potential, <laughs> as a potential route. Yeah. We haven't got much time. Tell me about the film, because the, so the, this is about Hunter Biden. Yeah. You're playing Hunter Biden in the film. I am. And, that, <laughs> and that's coming out next month? It's coming out. I think they, they've now delayed the release because I'm away on a holiday with the kids. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it comes out in, I think, either the end of August or beginning of September. OK. And in time for the midterms. And it's a, it's, a, it's a gangster comedy movie about the Biden family, written by two journalists who have never got it wrong. OK. So it's not really a political film. It's more a, f- a funny and sad film. Yes. And um, it's brilliant. I mean, is it not um, kind of risky to make a film about someone who's still alive with a lot of money? Um, yeah, well, actually, our set was infiltrated by his lawyers. So really? They, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was mad. They said that they were with the South Park crew and they wanted to come and sort of OK, OK. It, but, they, but actually, it was Hunter Biden's lawyers. So, yeah, I mean, if I end up, I didn't kill myself. <laughs> right. OK. If I'm taken to Paddington Police Station because I've done something wrong, it committed a non-crime hate incident... Yes. I did not kill myself. OK, so it, that's now on record, <laughs> on TV, so you can sleep well at night now, Lawrence. Lawrence Fox, thanks very much for joining me.